We start today with Sucrums Brewing's MacGuffin California Common. Caramel Toasty Malty. A North American style lager, flavors of caramel, toasted malt, and a slight fruity finish. Part of the proceeds from this uh, from the sale of this beer go towards autism funding awareness and research through the St. Amant Center, which is a non-profit organization locally here which provides services to uh, people with uh, developmental disabilities and autism. Very nice. Hmm, that's interesting. There is definitely some malt in there, but it's also got some of that Belgian uh, style kind of herb stuff going on in the background. Yeah. Since I finally got my extra tips in, I'm going to take a closer look at this T12 uh, soldering iron that was graciously sent in to me by, um, oh, I can never pronounce her name, uh, Hathria, I think it is. Um, one, of, one of you guys, anyway, one of my viewers, uh, back in Mailbag 80, sent this in, and I've been waiting for these tips to come in so that I can give it a proper shakedown and try out. So today is that. And then the first thing that you always want to kind of check on some cheap uh, Chinese cone electronics is whether or not it's properly grounded. And it is. There we go. So that's a good sign. Um, so we have some safety built into it already. Nice. Uh, it's in this nice solid aluminum case, as all these T12 clones tend to be. It has a fuse. Let's see what that fuse is. Looks like it's a 10 amp, 250 volt glass fuse, fast blow. Okay, that's reasonable enough, I guess. Maybe a little high. But at least it has a fuse. That's better than you can say for some of these things. And on the back, the only other thing is this on-off switch. Is it illuminated? It looks like it could be. No, it isn't. Okay, fair enough. Um, before we start playing with it too much, I think I want to pop the cover off and take a look inside. And so this type of case... Um, the front and back are on with four screws each and the top and bottom just clam show off. So if I take out top two screws front and back, the lid should just pop right off, hopefully. And the fourth one. Yeah, I can feel the lid loosening already. What do we get? What do we get? Oh, hey. So that's a nice touch. There's a little piece of insulation plastic in there. I don't know whether it's uh, uh, whether it's the proper stuff or not, but it's an insulating material. And we have everything on two boards. We have the display and uh, connect and control board up front, and then we have mostly a power supply, I guess, back there. Let's see now, does this? Oh, I guess we can separate it just by uh, pulling those other two screws off, can't we? Okay, so there's only really three connections between there. That one, that red one over there, looks like it might be a ground. Yeah, it's connected to the chassis here, to the frame of that. So that's a ground, just soldered on. Nice touch. And then we have two power wires going over there. So that looks like that's all this is back here is a power supply and a relatively solid looking one too. Um, not sure if I'm thrilled about how that's connected on there. Or I guess it's on there solidly enough mechanically. Um, that is the power switch wires there. A bit of a little gob of elastic or silicone or something on there to hold it mechanically and then this thing is just in the little slot circuit board slots in the case with a few more gobs of that silicone stuff on there okay can i see what some of these big so on the front here we have what was that symbol says it's a dual diode okay that's fair enough and what is that SVF 10 in 65. 
after a bit of searching, uh, that is a 10 amp uh, in channel MOSFET. Okay, that should be more than enough for this purpose. Okay, so a 10 amp MOSFET that explains the heat sink. It's reasonable enough, I guess. A um, couple of very good sized capacitors over there. What are those? 22 microfarads. Okay. And there's quite a number of anti-tracking slots cut in this board. Um, there's another one up here with the uh, opto isolator and a capacitor across it. And then another one that goes underneath this transformer here. And you can just see it underneath there. Okay. All in all, not too bad. Uh, we got here a little inductor over there. NTC thermistor, all the kinds of features that you would expect of a solid power supply. Uh, 400 volt rated capacitors there. And on the output side, can I see the reading on any of those? Low ESR capacitors, uh, 680 microfarad, 30 volt, 35 volt. Okay. It's like three of them all clustered together, plus an inductor on the output. That's probably a pretty decent power supply. I don't see any glaring issues with it. Now then, on the uh, brainy side of this thing, I've got a CR2032 uh, plugged in there. This thing has a real-time clock in it for reasons. A little buzzer there. That, I think, is a little thermal sensing resistor because it does sense ambient temperature. And... Some power supply gubbins down there. And the connection to the uh, little display board. I kind of like to... The brains of it seems to be underneath there. And I'm just going to carefully peel that back. And yeah, it is an STM32 microcontroller that's in charge of this whole thing. Okay. And a set of programming pins over there if I really wanted to do that. I probably don't. I don't know if there's much else to see inside here. Computer board, power supply, done deal. I'm going to slap this thing back together and we'll actually use it. Let's take a look inside the iron just for the fun of it. So there is the actual tip and it has three electrical contacts. Uh, ground, obviously, on the outside there. And there's a power and a sense for the thermocouple, I believe. And this unscrews from here awkwardly and then that piece slides out and what do we have in here we have the three contacts one two and three back there oh, that's kind of clever how that little piece of circuit board is in there to hold it mechanically i think these things normally have a tilt or a vibration sensor I think that might be what that is. Either that or it's some kind of a thermal cutout. Not sure exactly. I think that's a vibration sensor. Okay, so it uh, it can tell if you're handling the thing or if you just got it sitting down. Because this does apparently feature a timeout so that it uh, if you're not handling the iron for a while, it'll drop down to a lower temperature as a safety feature. I'm, I'm not offended by a safety feature. As I mentioned before, it came with this tip, which is a type T12 type K tip. And then I ordered a couple of smaller ones. Uh, the smaller, smallest one's a T12 BC1. I also ordered a BCF2, which I think I showed you in the mail bag are that tip profile, which not everybody's a fan of them. I happen to prefer them. I've just gotten used to them over the decades. And I'm guessing that the larger one I'm going to use for through hole and the smaller one for surface mount and finer work. That's my guess anyway. So I think I will put that one into the iron for now. So that just goes down to that little collar there. And then the locking bit goes on and pulls against that other collar. And that's nice and tight in there. And the stand features holes back here to store your tips in. I think they go that way. 
I don't think, yeah, I'm not sure. I think you might want to have it down that way so that the ceramic's a little bit more protected. I don't know. This thing didn't come with instructions. This is a super flexible cable. I'm guessing it's silicone cable. I'm not used to fancy stuff like that. I, I tend to use cheap cables normally myself, but I don't mind having something nicer. So now that we've got it all back together, power it on. A lot of these cheap knockoffs come with different branding. This one happens to be uh, DX Chimie or something like that. And I noticed, and I think I observed this before, that the menu came up in Chinese. At least I think that's Chinese. Could be Korean or Japanese. I don't know Asian languages. But you notice it's coming up to temperature. I've got it set for 325 and it says it's 325 and it's overshot. And if I adjust the knob and put the setting down and it seems to go fairly quickly and it chirps when it gets there. Wow. So the other things that I'm seeing on here right now, let's point with something else, uh, real time clock, which isn't set correctly, ambient temperature, not sure what that is. Um, that is the DC voltage going to the tip. Now I'm not sure what all this Chinese is. So I found a few different versions of the manual for this thing online. Uh, none of them seem to match the menus the way this one is set up right now. So it's going to be a bit of a trick to get it into English menus, but I think I got it figured out here. So I've zoomed in this much just so to minimize the flicker on the display. It is still scrolling. You can see that on the camera. I don't see that in real life. Um, so if you push and hold this for about three seconds, it takes you into the menu mode. There is a language setting in the menus. I've had to go through experimentally and find it. But it can do, what, four different languages? So here we are. Now that we can actually read it. Um, let's just go through these quickly here. Basic settings. That's the temperature. The sleep temperature. It'll take it down to 200 degrees right now. 345 is just what I happen to have it set for. Uh, sleep time, five minutes. Encoder steps, five. Uh, off time, 10 minutes. Okay. So it goes down to 200 degrees after five minutes, and then it shuts itself off after 10 minutes if you haven't touched the iron. Remember that vibration sensor in there? Advanced settings. Select core T12. What does, what are my options in there? T12 or 1320 something. Okay. Um, 1321 correction. T12 corrections. Oh, this is temperature uh, compensation. Okay. Uh, switching time, four milliseconds. I'm assuming that's the PWM frequency. Load optimized. Okay, so there is, uh, there is an option or a mode when you're using it. If you just tap the selector button quickly, it boosts it to, uh, for 10 seconds, it uh, boosts it to an increased temperature. And this one shows, or has it set right now. To boost it by 20 degrees so i guess if you're soldering onto a ground plane or something and you just need a little bit of extra oomph exit and backup language selection we already saw that other settings the date okay and time setting oh four seconds don't matter okay what else we got here buzzer switch on and off low voltage protection do i want that beeper constantly going off no i don't think i do because it's getting annoying low voltage protection 11 and a half volts i guess it'll shut off okay exit and backup um just for reference this one has software version 7.1 whatever that means
and push and hold to go back to there. So now you see it's actually in sleep mode right now because I haven't touched the uh, the work the tool for a while. If I grab it and pick it up, boom, back up the temperature. That is nice. Let's see what the tip temperature or the tip uh, thermometer says. Remember, I got this set for 345, according to this. That's pretty damn close. Can you see that? I like that. What more can you say? It gets up the temperature. It gets to the temperature it says. That's quite reasonable. Um, I'm going to have to play around with, uh, with temperature settings on it just to see what I like. Um, but that's, that's for another day. So what else? So the ambient temperature right now is 24 and that's measured on that little temperature sense. It was just back in here. Um, time and everything else, 25 volts. I'm guessing that that 4% PW is the pulse width modulation. Just to test that, I'm going to soak the sponge here so I can cool my iron off, iron tip off quicker. Um, and what that's going to do is probably, I'm hoping, cause the PWM to crank up a little bit. So when I put that iron into the puddle of water, yeah, you can hear it sizzling in the water, cooling the iron off, and you can actually see it cooling off. But yeah, in order to uh, to throw more heat at the thing, it's cranked the PWM way up. And I'm going to guess that as the iron is now just sitting in free space, yeah, the PWM is dropping back down again. Huh, that's cool. I don't know when I'll use that, but it's a cool feature to have, I guess. So these things are quite common. Um, there's several different brands um, I just searched around on eBay until I found the same brand that I got sent and they tend to go for in around this range plus or minus you can get them as kits or you can get them built up like this one was uh, this one as you can see has slightly different uh, software on it too so the menus are different and mine I think had five languages this one's only got three but you know uh, look around you never know what you're going to find generally the reviews that I've seen on various different YouTube channels and stuff of these things are say that they're at least as good or better than what you would expect for that price. And so far, I mean, I've played with mine a little bit, but now I'm going to get into it seriously pretty soon here. Uh, so far I'm pretty happy. And there is a good reference for all the different tip sizes that are available for it. So the, the tips that I've got are BC1, a K, uh, which is that one, and a, a BCF2, which is, I guess, that 2 millimeter one, but in a BCF shape. I don't know why it doesn't show it in there. Well, if you go on Heiko's website, you'll find more different tip shapes as well. Um, I don't know if these ones that I've got are actual Heiko ones or just knockoffs. But you can go on Heiko's website as well and look at all the different shapes and sizes and whether you whether you get uh, Heiko branded ones or ones that are knockoffs or clones or whatever, they all follow Heiko's general naming scheme and shape scheme. And there's way more detail than you ever want to know about the shapes of these tips. BCF2, there's the, there's the one that I've got there. Um... 45 degree, 2 millimeter diameter. And the BC1 is, again, 45 degrees and the 1 millimeter diameter. But as I said, there's lots of, uh, lots of variants on this. There are also different handles that you can get. Um, this one's a little bit skinnier one, which fits better into the stand that I've got. And yes, I've got that on order too. Not exactly that one. I found a less expensive one, but it should show up in a mailbag eventually. So yeah, when the, uh, when the, the smaller handle comes in, um, this, this iron holder came separately from the iron. 
So that's why it doesn't quite hold. It's for, it's for a different version of the handle. And I decided rather than getting a different stand, I'll get a different handle. It's not a big deal. I could have gotten either. I'm just thrilled that Hathtria decided to send me this. Uh, um, it, the two pieces came from different vendors. So that's probably, um, explains that, but that's not a big problem at all. The other thing that came with this is this little piece here. Now I assumed that it was just a heat resistant pad for putting the iron down on or soldering on or something, soldering on or something. But I was told that it's actually for gripping the tips and replacing them. So I guess you'd use a pair of pliers to do that part and just, and get that off there and then grip the hot tip, slide it out. Um, I guess you wouldn't need one to grip the cool one and put it back on. I'm thinking the only problem with that theory is that this piece is going to be hot to the touch. Um, and be a little bit of pain to, uh, to unscrew, but it's just that quick to change the tips around too. And there's room in the back of the stand there for six tips. I don't know that I'll ever have that many in my fleet, but should I decide to, I have a place to store them conveniently. So probably one last thing I should do just for fun, since I've got a new soldering iron, why not? Is just uh, solder something with it. So I've I've got the iron set for 350 degrees Celsius, just nice average kind of temperature. We'll see what that does. So I'll try this tip out in here. This is a horrible little board, but whatever. So I'm I'm using 22 gauge solder, which is is it 0.032 inch diameter. And we'll just solder a couple of things up here quickly. And this board doesn't really have solder mask on it. I didn't do anything to clean it. I'm just going for it here. And this, this solder being very fine solder doesn't have an awful lot of flux in it either. Yeah, that gets in there and gets hot quickly. Yeah, I mean, it solders. What do you want? It gets hot. Um, does the job and it uh, it stays hot, which is impressive. The old irons that I used to use, these cheap little Weller, one of these 25 watt, that I picked up, I don't know, hardware store maybe, or Radio Shack maybe, they did the job for a lot of years. But you have to be careful when, they're, when you're uh, working on big pads or something that sucks the heat out. This guy here seems to uh, compensate very well and just throw in a lot of extra power when it needs it. To be fair, so does the cheap Beku Beku iron here. Um, but its its temperature control doesn't seem to be quite as solid as this one. So I'm I'm pretty pleased with this guy. And I think it's going to get an awful lot of use around here. I don't know, have you guys, have any of you guys got a T12 style iron? Uh, I'd love to hear from you uh, what you like about yours or if there's some gotchas. Uh, obviously, this thing isn't a Heiko. It is a cheap clone, but that's okay. I approve of cheap clones, uh, especially the cheap part. Uh, no reason to spend tons and tons of money on your hobby unless you want to. Especially when there's something uh, that's viable that you can that is much more affordable. Anyway, thank you so much to Hastria for sending this to me. Thanks to you guys for watching and putting up with this. Um, I would love to hear what you have to say down in the comments. I will talk to you later.